Hello, my name is David Brooks, and I'm speaking for Oleg Chernoff. And today I want to introduce to you some different techniques that I use in 3D LUT Creator. Today we'll be focusing on color models using the software. You probably know that any color in computer graphics is represented by three numbers. The most popular is RGB, red, green, and blue. This representation is easy to use because this is the way that color is shown on our monitor. You can, for example, change RGB numbers directly through curves. If you tweak the R curve, for example, the red component in all the colors changed. This might not be what you want because the brightness changes along with the color. If I pull down the green component, everything becomes purple and darker as well. There are other color models you might be familiar with, such as Lab, YUV, HSL, or its modification HSP. All the models in the list have brightness as one component and color as the other two. For example, in the lab model, L is color luminance, A and B are color tints. Your monitor may not be able to show you the exact lab color space. That's okay though, because it most likely be converted to RGB anyway. You still might want to convert color from one model to another in order to have more control over color changes and tweak it in some new ways. For example, RGB doesn't have saturation features, but if you transfer to HSL, you see that S stands for saturation. In HSL, you can change the saturation exclusively without affecting other characteristics. The same applies to luminance and hue. 3D LUT Creator takes a color number from RGB and converts it to the model you choose from the list. Here, for example, the lab profile lets you change these numbers. For example, in the A and B tab, you can change color regardless of luminance. The CL tab lets you change specific color components in conjunction with the luminance. The upper grid has the A component horizontally and the L component vertically. The lower grid has the B component horizontally and the L component vertically as well. So when you move the grid vertically, it affects luminance. When you move it horizontally, it changes the color. In the curves tab, there are two curves working with this model. The luminance curve that affects luminance exclusively and the saturation over luminance curve. that lets you change saturation only in the shadows or the highlights. After applying those adjustments, the colors transferred back to RGB where all further corrections are made, such as the RGB curves and the two-dimensional curves. Let's see the differences between those color models. Imagine color as a three-dimensional space where luminance is represented vertically and the color plane is horizontal. Like this. Let's load an image with very saturated RGB colors. Now we'll see a figure that has all these three colors inside of it. There is no such RGB color that is represented here or here. The whole RGB space fits this figure. Let's take a look at this figure from the side. You can see that the saturated colors only exist in a particular luminance. The most saturated yellow has high luminance, while the blue is mostly saturated in low luminance. And once more, we'll see that there is no color that is represented here. There can be no bright blue or dark yellow. You can also see that as the grid approaches black, all the colors approach zero in their luminance. And of course, this also applies to white. If you follow the blue, you can see that as the luminance lowers, its saturation rises and drops back. Let's try and move back to a point where it does not exist.
We'll start with Photoshop. I'm converting the picture to lab space. Sampling black with the color sampler tool and adding a curves layer. I'm choosing the B channel to change the color and with the target adjustment tool, I'll start moving the point. As you can see, the black color is no longer black. The color sampler still shows luminance as zero. This happens because lab space in Photoshop keeps the color values just as numbers. I didn't change channel L and it remained zero. To display the image, Photoshop needs to convert the black color to RGB, but there is no color that corresponds to these numbers in RGB. When we try to convert the picture to RGB, Photoshop puts the closest RGB color value to the one we choose in lab. Now I'll convert it back to lab. We'll see that in order to keep the number in B, Photoshop has to change the L and A numbers. We only wanted to change the hue, but the luminance was affected as well. Let's see how the same process works in 3D LUT Creator. I'm taking a neutral point and moving it down. As you can see, black is still black because 3D LUT Creator has protection against luminance change. So if the color you want to achieve does not exist, 3D LUT Creator chooses the closest match with the same luminance. This allows you to turn up the saturation or change the colors without losing the luminance or reaching the limits of the RGB range. So when I change saturation, luminance stays the same and no details are lost. If I do the same in Photoshop, for example, I will lose some of the details. The same applies to lab saturation curves in Photoshop. I have added other color models too. You can see how they work by loading this rainbow image and clicking through them. For example, LXY has a similar luminance to Lab and its color channels have similar color distribution in the RGB color cube. Here, you can also see the RGB curb from above. And here's the side view. This CL page allows you to rotate the planes to see which color figure is projected and to see its shape clearly. Let's see the YUV model. This model doesn't use gamma decoding, so here we can see the straight figure borders. We can also rotate it. And here are other models. But why do we need all these different models? Traditional YUV model comes to a single point at the bottom, which makes it hard to distinguish color and saturation of dark tones. If we change the luminance, they become desaturated. The same thing happens to white colors. In order to fix this issue, I have added other color models marked with the letter E. These models have broader saturation in lights and darks. Let's take a look at the CL grids. Here, colors don't tighten toward the neutral axis in dark tones. So now, when we change the luminance, the saturation stays the same. This serves another important purpose. 
Let's take this picture with different color gradients. In the lab model, we see that the gradients come to a single spot at the top and the bottom. So if we have a yellow object in the picture, I cannot change its color with just one grid point because the yellow gradients have this footprint on the AV plane. And I'll have to work with this whole area. In the dark and bright tones, I won't be able to separate this color from other dark or bright colors. But if I use the HSPE color profile model, every color is localized in the exact area regardless of luminance. The side view shows us that the lines don't come to a single spot anymore. Using this color model, I can apply changes to a color in all tonal ranges. The mask component has the same feature. If I use a mask in lab mode, the gradient of a single color has different chromatic coordinates which makes it harder to work with in the mask. When I choose saturated parts, dark and bright parts are not getting into the mask and vice versa. When I choose dark colors, the mid-tones are not getting into the mask and the neutral colors start getting into the mask selection. When I choose the HSPE model, it's easier to choose the color I need because its coordinates are more localized and color gets selected in the whole tonal range. Let's see how it works on a photo. If I want to change the color of some object in my photo, it is better to choose a model where the whole object is projected into a single localized area. In lab, red color has a trajectory, which means I would have to work with all these points to work on the red. You can see this very well on the CL grids. Red goes diagonally. That's why it takes up such a broad area in the view from above. Here in the MABE color profile, the color goes vertically and we can see that these two points represent the whole object. I can change the color in all its tonal range easily. When I try to do the same in lab, Other objects also change color because some of the colors share coordinates. Every point on the AB surface corresponds to a particular color gradient. If I take the gray gradient and move it to another area, I will see the gradient that corresponds to this new point. In 2D curves, you can see the type of gradient in every color model. In lab, highlights and shadows are oversaturated, and the gradient has two angles. LXY and MXY are pretty much similar to lab. MAB has less saturated shadows and only one angle. SXYE has a curved gradient and HSP has an even saturation and a single angle. Another thing to consider is how these models work with brightness. It is a known fact that the human eye is most sensitive towards the color green. This green picture, for example, looks brighter than the blue one.
and the color profiles LAB, LXE, HSPXY, HSPEXY, and YUV, this fact is taken into account. So when we change a color, brightness looks similar. The color profiles MXE, MABE, MXYE, and SXYE do not take this into account. So when we move the color towards green, it looks lighter. And when we move towards blue, it looks darker. To wrap it up, I feel the best color model to work with when color grading photos is HSPE. But feel free to play with different ones and see what you come up with. I recommend using LAB and YUV for coarse color space warping. They also work best for noisy or overcompressed footage. SXY and HSP family models are good for selective color corrections. Each model has its own color flavor, so feel free to experiment with different ones and see which one will give you the best results in your situation. And remember, if you like this video, please subscribe and click on the like button down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.